tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones to Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny. Ooh. Hey. Guys, real quick, uh, check out samtriplee.com. We've got dates, okay? Dude, talk to anybody in Pittsburgh. Talk to anybody in Cleveland. Ooh. Talk to anybody in Pottstown. It was a crush fest. Come see me live. My revival is becoming a thing. People are coming to hear me drop the hammer of the gods, political, spiritual, and uh, religious topics. All there. That is uh, that is Friday night, this Friday night, the 19th. And then at the end of the month, we have Batavia, where I'm doing uh, a bunch of shows, Back to back jacks at the end of the month is uh, at the end of uh, Mar February is Bakersfield and Huntington Beach and then finally uh, a March third is going to be my live taping of my stand up special called Why You All Getting Quiet Quiet Okay uh, again check that out we'll get into the website you can help out Comedy Chaos uh, the Chaos Twins the premium content the new shirts are up everything's there. Uh, anything else? Oh, great oh, episode. This was a great episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. We have Tim R. Schwartz. Enjoy the show. All right, let's get into it. Very excited to have him on. He's an OG of this game. He is a great author. He's going to tell us a little bit about him, his books, and all that. So please welcome, uh, for the first time, to Tim Fullhat, Tim R. Schwartz. How are you, Tim? Hey, thank you very much. I'm great, and thank you very, thank you for having me on today. <laughs> Anytime, all the time. I already love your energy, brother, so thank you so all much right. for joining us. So, Tim, uh, you know, Mark was very excited. Our booker was very excited to have you on the show, and he gave us a stern lecture uh, on uh, who you were. And so <laughs> we're very excited to have you on, and we're honored. For our <laughs> listeners who may not um, know, be familiar with your work, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Oh, sure. Well, um, as you said, my name is uh, uh, Tim Swartz, or my pen name is Tim R. Swartz, so as not to uh, get myself mistaken for uh, uh, some other uh, Tim Swartz. Some shady uh, mathematician. Out there. That's right. And, you know, I think, I think that there's a, like a, a, a musician too who uh, teaches like drums and music. And, you know, and I'm sure they would appreciate not being associated with the life. There's a lot of, of, a lot of pressure yeah. that comes with the name Tim Schwartz. You can't. Yeah, there is. There, there really is. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, as for, uh, uh, who, who I am, I mean, I am a, uh, a researcher and writer of the, uh, of the world of the weird. And, uh, what I mean by that, I mean, uh, uh, anything that, um, is, uh, uh, uh strange and I'm interested in it, which, really can be just about anything. I mean, I love looking into all sorts of paranormal subjects, UFOs, cryptid creatures, uh, uh, ghosts and hauntings, uh, you name it. I've probably uh, looked into it and uh, written about it, at least uh, at some point in my life. Conspiracies, too, though I'm, I've... I've kind of gotten away to a certain extent from the whole conspiracy field because it's 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 gotten way too political and, <laughs> and believe it or not it's gotten crazy yeah. you know that's it, it's it's <laughs> it's funny that you know i would say that but at this point you know i look at some of these conspiracy stories that that are out there and i'm just like wow that's even too too crazy for me <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. And like everyone has their kind of um, genre in conspiracies and there's those who like to do the cryptids and the paranormal and all that stuff. And 
Uh, I enjoy them. I enjoy all of it. I just think it's interesting. And we, I'm like, oh, I'm good. Man, I've been getting some really weird stuff lately, uh, which maybe we can touch on a little later on uh, after we go through what you like to look into. But uh, I'm v I love cryptids. I love uh, paranormal. I love all that stuff. Uh, you know, I am a Christian, so I try to uh, figure out how that fits into all that, which is I'm open-minded to it all. Uh, but I enjoy it. So mm -hmm. my question to you is... Uh, so, you know, I live outside of the Mothman in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. You very rarely do you see any cryptids associated with really big cities. And we always debate it, 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 on this show, why is that? And, mm -hmm. you know, I have my, my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts are that there's so much electromagnetic energy here that it makes it really hard to see them for multiple reasons. Uh, either it keeps them out for some reason or the electromagnetic field uh, uh, camouflages them. There's just a lot. Like as you get out of the big city where, which I, you know, if you get into the Bible, Babel, I don't think we're meant to live in these giant cities. I think we're meant to be live off the land. And, you know, by getting into these big cities, it's kind of like. Uh, an anti-nature, anti-God movement. So, but as you get into, out into the forest, you start to, you know, less electricity. Now you're starting to ground yourself, and maybe farming, you start a to lot see, of farming, a lot of farming, a lot of chupacabras for my Mexican friend over there. So, there's a lot <laughs> of stuff. So, what is your thoughts on that, Tim? Well, you know, I I think one of the main reasons is uh, just to the the high density of population and the lack of really good places to hide. Uh, you know, I mean, um, cryptids. You know, it's an interesting field of study because I think that there are some actual physical cre uh, physical creatures uh, uh, in the cryptid line, but I think a lot of them also tend to go into the paranormal realm or, you know, uh, from, you know, like other realities and, and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, your theory about uh, the, the high density of electromagnetism uh, may have something to do with it, but even before our um, electrical technology type of society, cryptid creatures were never a big thing of the urban environment. Now, I say that, but there are some exceptions. You know, there have been Bigfoot type creatures seen in the middle of really large cities. And I think uh, that's because... Uh, a physical Bigfoot probably uses, say, like uh, uh, rivers and streams to uh, uh, make its way around without being uh, uh, seen. They're they're not a like a, a, an amphibian. They're just good at swimming. And every practically every uh, uh, big city and town has a river or several rivers running through it. Uh, so, you know, if, if you do have uh, Bigfoot sightings in a big city, it generally always tends to be around uh, uh, rivers. Now, uh, there's also, say, like New York City, which had the um, alligator sightings in the sewers. And that was actually a thing. I mean, it's been a while, you know, mostly in the early 20th century. And I don't know, you know, some people may not uh, consider alligators cryptids, but a cryptid is really any kind of creature that's out of place, some place where it shouldn't be. And as far as I know, alligators aren't supposed to be in the sewers of, of New York. Yeah. Uh, big, big snakes as well. Now, uh, cities are, uh, have been a focal point uh, a lot of times for really big snakes. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, your normal 20, 30 foot anaconda. No, I'm talking about, you know, like 50 foot snakes seen in somebody's uh, uh, backyard. Yeah. Uh, Philadelphia in the uh, um, the 1970s had some uh, interesting, very large snake sightings. Uh, uh, and that extended also to uh, uh, Pittsburgh and some other uh, 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 smaller cities in, in Pennsylvania. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. And, uh, you know, I would say that, you know, mostly the reason that you don't see a lot of cryptids in, in cities is that it doesn't give them a good place to hide. 
Yeah, I, I I agree with all that. I agree with all that, and I do think the funniest thing is like, you know, because that's interesting. Is like, a, is a cryptid just a uh, animal that you don't tend to see? Uh, in, in it's in unusual places, which is like, have you ever seen a coyote in your neighborhood? You're like, where did you come from? Yeah. How did you get here? Yeah. How did you get off the 101? You know, it's like, <laughs> right. it's yeah. like really weird. Um, but for sure, I, I'm totally down with all that. Um, what do you, I want to get into, cause we want to talk about, I think they're called, uh, mimics, but mimics, I want to ask yeah. you something. You know, this obviously is a conspiracy podcast called Tim Fall Hat, uh, killing it, doing very well. We love you all very much for listening. Um, but we've had people come on and they've talked about how there is a possibility that there is like, if you get into the whole ice wall, flat earth discussion, not that you'd be a flat earther, but we, we see these animals that we don't see anywhere else. Like and someone just did a head of filmed it like the weirdest fish you've ever seen in your life you're like where did this come from is there any thoughts of that cryptids could be animals or anything from beyond the ice wall do you have any thoughts on that like in a flat earth kind of uh antarctica is an ice wall to keeping us in this little puddle from other puddles well, I'll have to just come right out and say that, you know, I don't believe in the whole flat earth thing. Respect. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, now, uh, and and I, I'm, I just find it, I find it hard to believe that uh, all the other uh, planets in the solar system are uh, round and <laughs> spherical shaped and earth would be the only one that would, uh, that would be flat. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm like, you know, what's, what's up with that? You know, okay. I mean, did, uh, did we draw the short straw okay. and, uh, you I'm know, and, 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 you know, and get the, get the leftovers, uh, for, uh, for the sloppy for seconds. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, and you know, in, um, uh, I, I worked in television for a number of years and had the opportunity to uh, a couple times to go up in uh, fighter jets and at a very high altitude and uh, uh, it was high enough that you really could start to see the curvature of the oh, earth. Okay. All right. All right. So, all right. you know, I mean, uh, uh, and, and of course, I mean, you know, considering my age, I was a big, big fan of the whole uh, space program, uh, uh, you know, the Gemini and the, uh, and the Apollo and things like that. And, you know, if there, if there was a conspiracy to hide the fact that we live on a flat planet you know uh, my my question first of all is why why would you want to hide something like that if we were living on a flat planet you know it's it, it just seems to me to be you know odd after all of these centuries that that would be something that you'd be keeping hidden from the public and it would be you know really it would be impossible to to keep something like that right. uh, uh, hidden from the public I didn't public. mean to divert us into that but oh no so no, no, you, no 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 I mean I I I like I like talking about this kind of stuff. The, so uh, I mean, yeah. How about the moon landing? Do you believe in the moon okay, landing? Okay, we're gonna get. Let's not go. He likes space. Let's not get into that. What I want to get into <laughs> is: is it possible that the the uh, that these are creatures from what are they? Uh, extra because there's people who talked about how um, you know extraterrestrial could be extra territory that we might not know about and these mm -hmm. creatures could be from there are these cryptids interdimensional what do you think they are yeah i i do think um a lot of them are you know there there seems to be an interesting phenomena when it comes to not only cryptid but just about uh, you know anything on this planet that has a paranormal copycat uh, uh to it i think that there probably are actual physical say like uh, uh, a bigfoot so, you know remnants you know cousin species of of homo sapiens that uh, are probably just as smart as us but their intelligence goes rather than in a technological way it goes in a different direction and that's how they've managed to keep themselves pretty much hidden from us uh for the most part uh, uh people you know see them all the time so i mean they're not they're not that good at it but they're good enough that they don't get hit by trucks uh at least not that we know of uh, but then there is 
another aspect to them where you have these sightings where the creature will um, suddenly just disappear or or like we were talking about earlier being seen in big cities you know a big city it's really hard to find a place to hide but you'll have these cryptids seen in an area uh and then by a number of different people for an extended period of time and then it's not seen again uh as well as um types of uh, uh physical characteristics eyes that glow a bright red kind of like the uh, uh mothman types of creatures and i'm not talking about uh like light reflection uh like a dog or a cat that you would see at night and you you know you catch it in the headlights of your cars and the eyes will shine now these things will have a light that seems to glow from the inside which is a uh um a really old characteristic of paranormal supernatural types of of creatures so you know i i think that there is a possibility and you know we use the word you know extra dimensional or something like that we really just don't know i mean i i do think that there are other realities that exist alongside of our own uh and that there are times when these things and maybe us too uh are able to uh briefly be seen or or even make that uh, a journey you know across the veil and uh, uh and appear briefly in our reality, uh, uh, only to uh, fade away and go back to their own. Respect on that. Respect on that. So let's get in to your news. I, I just love the whole story of cryptids. I, I've seen, uh, I have seen um, ghosts. Uh, Johnny sees uh, dead Hispanics in his graveyard by his house all the time. Uh, they're walking through the graveyard. Uh, he knows that. Uh, and he talks about it all the time. Not quite right, but close. Why? Enough. What is it? <laughs> someone else, some, someone who works on the farm has oh, seen I, Jesus. What uh, a dude. Hispanic man saw Jesus. Oh, on the farm. got that wrong. Yeah. Okay, so a Hispanic man saw Jesus walking through. Yes, and then people have seen ghosts in the grave. Yeah, yeah like I've my seen dad, ghosts. See a lot around. of ghosts. A lot I of ghosts. Not. But uh, I want to get into your new book. It sounds amazing. I'm going to buy it. It's called Mimics: The Others Amongst Us. Tell us a little bit about your book. Yeah, well, this book is about, and um, on all the years of my writing and research, there is um, a, a rather common denominator on all across the uh, uh, the paranormal field when it comes uh, ghosts, UFOs, even cryptid creatures of entities that have been seen and have either talked with people or associated with people, or even you just, you know, run into them on the streets that have the appearance of being human. Uh, for the most part, they look human and they somewhat act like human. Um, but it's apparent that they're not. And I mean, you go as far back as uh, 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 biblical times when people, People had uh, sightings of human-looking, what they thought were angels. Uh, uh, even further back, uh, uh, various types of the ancient uh, uh, gods and demigods would appear to people in a human-like form. You then had uh, uh, the like the old uh, uh, tales about the you know uh, uh, fairies and elves and things like that. They always had a human-like appearance. Up to modern times, in association with the UFO phenomena, the beings seen that uh, come out of these ships or even seem to be associated with UFOs always tend to have a very human-like appearance. Up to the point where people will just be, say, like walking down the street and they'll come across uh, uh, somebody that doesn't look or act quite right and and i know i mean there are there are a lot of normal humans out there that are like that uh but one of the characteristics is that people when they have encounters with these beings will have that gut feeling that something isn't right 
that they are in the presence of something that isn't human. And uh, uh, people often describe their, like the hair on the back of their neck raising up. Uh, uh, sometimes people will be scared to death. They'll, uh, they'll, have, they'll, they'll feel sick to their stomach. They'll feel like that they're in danger. You know, they'll get that uh, 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 flight or uh, uh, flight or fight type of, 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 of feeling. Now, not all of these associations are like that. Some of them are, are, are actually um, mind-blowing and uh, 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 information that uh, has been then used uh, really for, for, for centuries on a spiritual basis has been passed back and forth with these beings to people. But the thesis of the book is, is that we're not alone on this planet. We're not the only intelligent species, that there are other things on this planet that can either look like us, they either do look like us, or they can look like us. But they're not us. They're not people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are we getting into maybe lizard people? Is it possible? <laughs> We might be talking about some lizard people who walk amongst us. Is that is that all possible? You know what? He, what he reminds me of is that girl on the airplane. Remember when she yells out, "He's not real! He's yeah, not real!" That, that kind of reminds me of how. But he, did you ever see the the actual person she was talking about? He was super creepy. Yeah, he was covered in tats. <laughs> yeah, but and he really just had weird, weird, yeah, weird eyes energy, and yeah. super weird teeth. <laughs> Yeah, weird dude. You know, though, you know, with that story afterwards, she said that she actually was just having a fight with her family, you know, and that uh, she she was honked off at him, and uh, uh, and that's that's what what caused all that. But yeah, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, you know, that video, she's she's saying that guy's not real, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And you know, that came that happened just right after the book came out so you know it's 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 too bad it didn't happen you know like about a month earlier we could have been good. we could have been good. but but see that's 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 a perfect type of of situation of of people who have had these kinds um these kinds of encounters, uh, uh, usually they're not that extreme that people won't just suddenly, you know, start screaming in public, you know, that that dude's not real. Uh, uh, oh. but, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, um, uh, one of the stories that we have in the book, uh, was a, a, a guy who worked for the, uh, a publisher, and I can't think of the publisher's name now. Uh, the publisher had just printed Whitley Strieber's book, Communion. And, uh, uh, he was in a bookstore with his wife in New York just right after the book came out and was checking out the display that this bookstore had for this book. You know, I mean, when Communion came out, it was a big seller and, and, uh, uh really just, uh, you know, got a lot of people going. And he said that uh, while he was in this store, two people came into the store and, uh, they, they were dressed, uh, uh, very heavy clothes, wraparound scarves, big sunglasses, hats pulled down over uh -oh. their heads. Hey guys, I want to tell you about our friend at Mood. Listen, Mood is known for their federally legal THC. Now they're adding their most potent product yet to their lineup, introducing hemp based THCA flower, the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings like Delta 8 flower, gummies, vape, cartridges, and more. And for a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. Just visit just visit hello mood.com and use the code tinfoil. Nothing better than this THC diamonds right here. They go hard on my joint, not to mention the edibles, Delta 9 edibles, uh perfect to go to sleep, uh especially on the road with Sam when he's snoring. Uh nothing better than a THC edible to put you to sleep and relax. Since THCA converts into THC when you heat it, you get access to the classic marijuana high, okay? Mood puts an end to the guessing game with federally legal forms of THC extract from hemp plants. All their products are regulated third-party tested in drug enforcement agency registered labs, okay? Different strains for specific moods from euphoric to energized 
creative to chill, okay? Great for both beginner and veteran users. Great taste in gummies, classic flour, convenient pre-rolls, and so much more. So here's what we need you to do. Try Mood's new THCA flour today. And for 20% off your first order and free THCA pre-roll, go to hellomood.com and use the promo code TINFOIL, okay? That's hello mood m o o d dot com code tinfoil for twenty percent off your order and free t h c a pre roll. Are we talking men in black? Uh, not quite men in black. It was a man and a woman, uh, but men in black are are, what are if part men of men in black scenario? are doing di. They're doing diversity. They're like we got to have a couple. We got to have a couple women in this men in black stuff. So. We're men in beige now too. Just say that. That's right, men in beige. All right. <laughs> But uh, the woman, especially, well, and and these these uh, two people, they they got a copy of this book, and they were going through it, and they were making comments, and they were saying, "Well, he got that right," and he was, "Oh, he really didn't get that right at all," you know, like they had some kind of inside knowledge. So uh, uh, this guy, actually, I mean, he walked up to them, and, and he was like, "Hey, you know, I work for the publisher." I would like to know, you know, uh, what it is about this book that, you know, that you like or, or you're finding fault with. And he said the woman looked up at him and he could tell she had big sunglasses, but he could tell that she had huge eyes and eyes that like wrapped around the <laughs> side of her head. And she was really pale and her chin came down to almost a point and she had like a scarf uh, uh, you know, kind of like hiding it. But he said that she looked up at him, didn't say a thing. And he said that he had the feeling from her looking at him that first of all, she hated him. She just, she, he could just feel the hatred. And he'd never seen her before. And he said that he felt like he was in the presence of a mad dog. Oh, really? And that she, and that she was going to attack him at any moment. And he was just like, well, oh, oh, sorry, didn't mean to bother you and backed off and they left. All right. So, I mean, that's, that's, that is a, 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 a good encounter of, 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 of the others. It's yeah, very, yeah. very creepy. Well, now, uh, real, okay, 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 go, okay, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Well, I was just going to, you wanted to talk about the, uh, 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 the reptilians. Yeah. Yeah. And, because, uh, princes die. Fam well, According to her friend, talked about seeing the 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 uh, royals morph from like people to lizard people. Mm -hmm. She talked about going to weird ceremonies. It's you know what the weirdest one is Adele. Adele is the weirdest one because there was this famous like very famous um, post on like Reddit where it said a bunch of fans saw her shape shift. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then Adele comes out and looks yeah. completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Goes from <laughs> chunky Adele to smoke show Adele. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, dude, that's kind of crazy, dude. That's kind of crazy. We've heard that before, these shape shifting. And then you had um, the leader of the Smashing Pumpkins on uh, Rogan or on Stern talking about Billy seeing Corgan. People, yeah, seeing people shave shift. So my question was like, uh, w yeah. So you're gonna get into it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, with Adele, you know, Ozempic is a wonderful thing. <laughs> uh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just yeah. leave it. I'll just yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole uh, the reptilian thing, and of course, that's uh, 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 that was that was David Icke's. Uh, 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 a brainchild. I mean, you know, and that that that's been around for a long time. And you know, it is interesting because the uh, the idea of reptilians has been with us long, long before uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, any of us have been alive. I mean, you know, you could go as far back as say, like even the Bible and uh, the, the, the whole um, Adam and Eve and the serpent could be interpreted as uh, uh, a reptilian. Yeah. I've heard uh, that. 
Yeah. And, you know, a lot of ancient societies uh, had it that there was uh, another group of beings on this planet that were reptiles. But rather than being um, evil, these were uh, these were creatures that were helping us, that uh, taught us agriculture, mathematics and and things like that. And it really it, it, it hasn't been until. Uh, modern times that the, the, the whole thing, the reptilians are some kind of, of evil race, maybe the original race on the planet that, uh, uh, maybe descended from the dinosaurs. And, uh, you know, cause dinosaurs, I mean, they were here for, uh, millions of years. I mean, we've only been here for, you know, less than a hundred thousand years. And, uh, you know, who's to say that they didn't actually, you know, have one of them that, uh, you know, one species that, uh, you know, got intelligent and actually uh, did build a society and then leave, (laughs) you know, built spaceships and got the heck out of here, only later to come back and find that the monkeys had taken over. So, you know, (laughs) uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, if you were an intelligent race of, uh, of, of reptilians and then came back and find that the world's covered in, you know, nasty monkeys, you know, you'd be mad too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, we do have, there is a chapter in the book that uh, was written by, uh, um, uh, uh, one of our writers that, uh, um, had this encounter, or, or actually, you know, some friends of his had uh, an encounter with this guy who claimed to be an extraterrestrial and was a shape shifting reptilian. You know, it's you know it, that that one. I mean, it's a fascinating chapter, though. I mean, only I guess one or two people who were associated with this guy actually saw him do this. But he had a lot of other weird characteristics that made you think that, uh, you know, there wasn't something quite normal about this guy. Uh, but I think myself, my own opinion, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, and I don't want to go and uh, disparage anybody else who is thinking otherwise. My own opinion, I think that the whole reptilian thing uh, is is rather overblown. And I didn't hear anything about the reptilians till after that TV show in the, uh, um, I think it came out originally in the early eighties. They V V. right, right. You know, the reptilians didn't become a thing till after that show came out. And, uh, but see, that's, that is part of the stuff that, that I write about is the influence of pop culture as well on all of it. And I think the reptilians is a perfect example of how pulp culture can have a major influence on our belief systems and our modern day mythologies that really kind of almost take on a life of their own, uh, which, which is, you know, an interesting phenomena, uh, uh, you know, in and of itself. Um, when you get into the mimics, where do you tend to see these mimics more? Is there a place where they're more prevalent uh, is it in is it in politics, Hollywood? Is there is there an area where I can go to get more mimics? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, okay, and and uh, the thing that I want to stress is that you know when I talk about uh, uh, the mimics, I you know, I'm not saying that there are say you know like the reptilians that there are specific groups of people out there who are who have disguised themselves as humans but they're actually something else. I mean, you do that and you're starting to get into all all of that uh, uh, political conspiracy theories that have come about because you don't like somebody else's politics, so naturally they're not human. And uh, that's that's definitely what we're not trying to say. Respect. The, the mimic phenomena really tends to be, um, you know, it just happens when it happens. It's uh, 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 there are there are people who have say had like UFO sightings and we'll, you know, we'll kind of uh, we'll go back to the UFO phenomena because that is. That is the modern version uh, that the mimic seem to have adopted themselves to, uh, to, to, to 
to, I don't know, I, you know, again, I don't want to say to work within our society, you know, because again, we're, go, we're going back to that, you know, those uh, political types of conspiracies. Right, right, right. Uh, but there are a lot of, of people who have, say, like had just an average, you know, if there is an average UFO sighting, you know, saw some lights in the sky and like, oh, well, that's weird. And then all of a sudden they're visited by the men in black. Or the women in black, yes. or you know, are pe are weird looking people selling encyclopedias? Yeah. Or, oh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, or you know, uh, uh, there was, uh, or you know, dressed like um, Air Force colonels. Uh, uh, especially in the seventies, uh, there were cases where uh, uh, people after a UFO sighting would be uh, visited by by men claiming to be from the Air Force, United States Air Force. There were some cases in, uh, say, like England as well, where it would have been the uh, 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 the Royal Air Force. Um, and uh, they would want, even though these people had never talked about their UFO experience, never even mentioned it to their friends, these guys would show up knowing all the details and then wanting to know if the people had taken any pictures, if they had any, you know, more information that they wanted to tell them. And then, ha and then have weird characteristics. The, the one case in the United States I was referring to, this guy, uh, and he had the, you know, dressed in the uniform, had the proper credentials, complained to the witness, it was like a housewife, that he had an upset stomach. So she had just made jello. And she's like, well, you know, how about some jello? Jello is good for, you know, soothing an upset stomach. And she gave him a bowl and he did not know how to eat jello. Oh. He tried to drink it like a, like a beverage from the bowl. You know, so as, and as far as I know, most people, you know, at least in the United States, know what Jello is and how to eat it. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you those are the types of cases that 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 you have. Um, there was another one where uh, actually this this was like a a, a a a a city commissioner in I think it was Manchester, UK. Uh, he was out one uh, um, uh, Saturday morning uh, uh, downtown. And he saw this woman walking amongst the crowd, and she just stood out among everybody else like a sore thumb. He said that, um, first of all, she had kind of a silvery colored skin. Uh, now, and of course, I mean, you know, people can put on makeup and stuff and she was wearing the closest thing he could think of was that it was, it was like a ballerina type of dress, but it was like, you know, very shiny and, 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 and pretty. And, but her eyes were very big. That's one of the characteristics of true see with the mimics is a lot of times the eyes are extremely unusual, usually described as bigger than normal. Maybe, uh, uh, the eye, the, the, the color is like bright blue. And again, that wraparound, you know, where the eyes extend over the sides of the eyes. But he said that, um, she was walking he put it, her gait was almost like a penguin, kind of like this back and forth type of, of movement. And her hands were up as she was walking and kind of twirling like that. And, and he said that she was, it seemed to him like she was sightseeing, that she was just taking in everything with amazement. And, uh, and he said that other people were kind of like looking at her, but nobody. And he said he wishes that he had stopped and asked her, you know, like, you know, are you enjoying, you know, are you enjoying this day or something? Uh, but that's one of the other characteristics of the mimics is that a lot of times when people just see them on the streets like that, you may think that, wow, she's weird, but then you don't do anything. You don't do anything about it. All right. Yeah. Men yeah. are afraid of to uh, approach women now. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, yeah. Men are I like, mean, I don't you know. want to get me too. And I can't come talk to you. So <laughs> well, like, I mean, and this was a few years ago before the whole Me, me Too movement. Oh, okay, okay. You okay. know, and like I said, this guy, you know, he was like a, you know, like a minor city politician. So, I mean, he wouldn't have had any qualms going up to somebody and saying, you know, and, and she was really fascinating. I guess they had like a, uh, 
a, a, an outdoor clock on a building. And he said that she was just really fascinated uh, uh, by that clock. But he said that at that time, even though he thought it was kind of an unusual circumstance, it didn't even occur to him to stop and try to talk to her. And, and it wasn't until afterwards that it was just like, why did I do that? Why did, you know, this was a really weird looking person. <laughs> why didn't I at least go up and talk to her? You know, uh, but, you know, you see that a lot with, say, like um, UFO sightings or even some cryptid sightings where somebody may have a camera right there and have gone out looking specifically for these types of things with a camera. But when it actually occurs, the it didn't it didn't even occur to them to bring the camera up and take a picture. It's not until afterwards that they're just like. Why didn't I take a picture? <laughs> that that reminds me so much of this Miami thing, wh whether you believe that or not. Oh, the yeah. aliens? You're talking about the attempt for the yeah, aliens? Yeah, yeah. So I was talking about this on stage last night. It's like, like half of the women in uh, Miami are OnlyFans, and you think like they'd be running up and uh, like twerking on the, the gray alien just for, <laughs> just for content, yet there's not one video out there of of any of that stuff. And then everybody who's talking after is, let's just say, talking a little proper for Miami, you know? <laughs> you think they'd be a little bit more excitable? About uh, yes, seeing... several gentlemen came in here uh, and just cleared out the place. Yeah, and, you and know, we... I saw a couple of teenagers fighting over in Yon Corner. <laughs> yeah. me, me and my boys were just running for our lives to get back to the hood so we could talk about what happened with it. It was way too calm, way too collected, not not animated enough for so me. You're, you're still running on that. It was just Project Blue Beam. No, it was just them being dramatic or overreacting. Cops. It was really no. A, I don't know what's going on, but it's it, the notion of a ten foot thing and nobody has a video of it, like he was talking about. Unless yeah. we're getting into this thing where these things can erase it in real time with just magic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's a, that was a weird, very weird thing. And I'm with you. It's just like, okay, if there were ten foot tall creatures, you know, suddenly appearing, you know, in this uh, outside mall area, why aren't there more cameras? You yeah. know, why aren't there more, you know, uh, pictures of it? But then again, like I said, a lot of times in these kinds of, uh, of circumstances, it doesn't even occur to people uh, uh, to do that. You know, so I mean, that's uh, I've I I I haven't put down an opinion yet on on what happened there. Um, yeah, I need I need to actually talk to some people who have who were there at the time. I've been trying to track somebody down. Somebody, uh, that, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, you you're getting lots you. of you're getting a lot of anecdotal stories, but I have yet to come across anybody who will definitively say, yeah, I was there, this 10 foot thing appeared, you know, walked up and down and, and then disappeared. And then the cops came in. Yeah. That'd be you good know? for TFH live. We should get some. That, money would, on be from Miami. It, that would be great. Hey, perfect. If you were in Miami and saw the 10 foot gray, cause I think they're all Japanese grays, but <laughs> you, you see a 10 foot gray, Come call in the Tim Fall. What's the number, Johnny? Oh, jeez. I would love for them to come on live, honestly. I, you get at me on Twitter, at Johnny hey, Woodard. Or on if you are the 10 foot gray and yeah, you I mean, listen obviously. to the show, you have a you standing invitation. Any you, alien. You, yeah, you have an open well, invitation. One right here. To come on. No, not an illegal one, <laughs> a, a space alien one. So, hey, no, wait, 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 yeah. so I was going to ask you, okay, before we get off that topic. So if you, we all believe that it was all fake or there was no 10-foot aliens, then why is the news running with it? Like the actual okay, news. I'm We're talking NBC, you, Why do you think the news is running with it? they want us to believe well, in aliens. how many episodes have you no, been no, on this I know, show? I just want to know if do you, do you think it was Project Bluebeam? I think there was I, I more think Project they're laying Blue this down, yes. Good save, they're, actually. They're getting more and more and more and more. More, they're ju it's just this. Pro like, listen, dude. So I've had people on my show to say Project Blue Beam is the real psyop. Is that something's really going to happen, and the government wants you to believe that it's them doing it instead of the real thing? Do you understand that? Yeah. Like, it's like four D, five D chess here. It's like 
They want you to think it's they're faking it. In reality, it's happening. It's they oh, just uh, want you to think they're faking. The double like, fake. Yeah. So uh, you got to do everything in, in Croft Maga stance. That's what I've learned. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm listening, but hands are up in defense, yeah. ready to fight. Yeah. You, know, you go walking up to it thinking it's a hologram, and you just catch a laser right yeah, between right the in eyes. Your head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I I am open minded to all of it, but everything will be seen through the lens of skepticism, not. Not to be disrespectful, but just to be like, okay, I, I I know what they've been wanting to push us forever. What is really going on? So I'm a, I want to get into. Do you have anything else to say about that? Because I want to get into some Tesla stuff, but I want to kind of set it up. Uh, but do you have anything else on the mimic that we didn't cover that you'd like to get out? Well, I just I, I wanted to comment real quick about the uh, uh, Project Bluebeam. You know, I mean, when uh, when I was writing about this stuff as far back as the early 1990s, uh, there were people talking about Project Bluebeam then. So, I mean, this isn't the Project Bluebeam isn't anything new. Uh, I mean, it's been around for a long time. And, uh, you know, I always say to people, well, if they had Project Bluebeam as far back as, you know, when I was, you know, first seeing it back in the uh, uh, early 1990s, why haven't they used it yet? And uh, 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 if the technology was that good that far back, you know, is it even better now, or is this just another one of these stories that gets out there to make people think that this technology is 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 so good when it's actually not? Because that is a thing. You know, you start these rumors that we have this amazing technology. We have anti-gravity. We have the invisibility ray. We have Project Blue Beam. We don't have any of that, but... You know, you may uh, uh, have, say, like uh, a Russian agent who then takes it back to Putin and says, hey, you know, they, they're saying that they've got, you know, Project Bluebeam when they don't, you know. Now, saying that, I do believe, though, that we are technologically advanced enough, the, uh, the United States and probably other countries as well, to have holographic imaging that could work kind of like what we've been talking about with Project Bluebeam, that you could actually make things appear, uh, uh, you know, like three-dimensional that uh, could appear and disappear and elicit all kinds of problems. You know, allegedly Project Bluebeam was to be used um, over Cuba uh, in the uh, early 1960s. Oh, yeah, to try to uh, make an image of, say, like the Virgin Mary or Jesus uh, appear over Havana and uh, and then start people rioting and uh, uh, overthrow the Castro uh, uh, government. Unbelievable. So, Unbelievable. Yeah, so, yeah, that, see, allegedly that was what Project Bluebeam was uh, uh, originally uh, developed for. You know, and and if they were working on something like that back in the '60s, you know, they could have something even better than that now. But it, uh, you know, that's that's it's one of these types of things that you know you save it for really good circumstances. You know, say, uh, and I don't know, you know, what those circumstances would be. You know, like maybe um, during the first desert uh, uh, storm, you know, invasion of Iraq when all the soldiers uh, just suddenly dropped their weapons and started surrendering to uh, the uh, 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 American troops oh, yeah, without yeah, yeah. any reasons. Yeah. You know, I mean, w were they shown something? You know, uh, 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 did they hear something that was some kind of uh, top secret uh, uh, weapon? Uh, along the lines of blue beam or or even uh, uh, types of mind control that just made them say, "Yep, oh, that's it. We're you know, we're giving up." Uh, that's you know, I mean, interesting. That's, that's really that is a possibility. Yeah. What was that? What was that? Was it in? Oh, the scarecrow in Batman, right? He'd blow dust on you, yeah, and you'd yeah. see this crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, man. I I I, I right. never thought from yeah. that angle, like the because we know that they have voice to skull technology, right? Mm -hmm. I I, right. I wanted to get into a little bit about that with you, uh, your thoughts on all this stuff because, uh, I've just watched this video early, but yeah, man, I never thought about that. And you know, you get into Iraq and the discussion about um, 
on um about the uh redheaded nephilim that they met out there and all that right. stuff and it's like it's it's beyond inter- i know that our world is a lot more interesting than they want us to know you know oh oh yeah that, absolutely uh you know i mean uh, science tends to teach uh, uh, uh tends to teach us that our world is strictly materialistic. That's it. Yes. That there is nothing else. Uh, but that's not true. That's not true. The 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 our world, the universe, our reality is so much more amazing and complex than we'll ever be able to understand. And and that's just it. You know, we're talking about all these things, all these different kinds of phenomena. You know, and and you know, not the top secret technological ones that, you know, that, that, that we're discussing, uh, but just, you know, all these things, you know, we may never know the answer on why these things happen. They just do. <laughs> yeah. I, it's interesting. So Tesla's an interesting guy. Uh, you know, there's all these theories about, uh, you know, uh, Tataria free energy, all this stuff. So I, I want to preface this by saying that I recently watched a, a, a video that kind of like really opened my eyes and it was by a woman named Sabrina Wallace and Sabrina Wallace does a deep dive into basically the technology that the government has. And, you know, while everybody's looking, she called it the uh, beast engineering technology. That's what she called it. She's obviously religious uh, Christian, cool with that. Um, and she was getting into that. So, so like, while everybody is like waiting for this chip to be put in, right? They're like, oh, they're going to chip mm-hmm. you. She's saying they're way beyond that. They don't even need the chipping. They don't even need any of that. Uh, you know, and then she gets into these direct energy weapons. She's like, you know, we've had people come on going, they don't need that. They don't need a uh, ship who hits you with a, uh, you know, a, a direct. They're beyond that. They know they could just use weather modification. So the, how this leads into is like, this is Sam speaking, okay, that I believe in mi- that we live in a very mystic uh, reality. That mm-hmm. even though I'm a Christian, got Christ in my life, I, I believe in mysticism. I'm going to lose some people. Some people get angry. We're just having discussions here, okay? What do you and, mean by that exactly, though? Well, Mrs. Systems. Well, that's what I'm going to get yeah. into is that there <laughs> that there is magic. And what I'm believing here, okay, and this is, again, Sam speaking, is that uh, these people with their technologies, these elites, have figured out how to hardwire mysticism, to use technology to do things like Bluetooth that we just take for granted, uh, you know, even a direct energy weapon is a form of you kick fire, you know, all that stuff that we would see that they talked about way back in the day, or even stuff we like in Dr. Strange stuff where they could just like, according to her. And again, this is a very advanced deep beyond like nine red belt stripes on your black belt. Okay. On Discussion. I'll send it to you. Okay. It's like, it's like, it's like on rumble. It's like super deep, bro. And it's so, you know, like she's saying that they have the CRISPR DNA technology to give you psychic powers, take away psychic powers. They can edit you for, through these frequency stuff, which we've heard before, right? Hot 5G, all that stuff. And the reason I bring that up is because this gets into some Tesla stuff and things Tesla was talking about with universal numbers and free energy and all that stuff. So like what we do in our society is we, again, it's, it's somewhat what we just talked about where like they take this, what they, they label it woo woo, right? Or they take the spirituality stuff and they harden it and call it science. And they take out all the amazing stuff around here, like the hermetic principles. Mm-hmm. Most people don't know what the hermetic principles are. They, but what in real, reality they are is what they turned the laws of physics into. They took out all the energy, all the magic, all the spirituality out of the hermetic principles and gave us the laws of physics. And we all believe that because science, right? Mm-hmm. So my point is like Tesla and everything he believed in, he believed in a much more amazing reality right would you agree on that 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, in his heyday, when uh, uh, Tesla was in the top of his form, just uh, coming up with all kinds of amazing invent inventions, and and you know, I I should say that uh, uh, without Tesla, we would not be able to do this type of show. Yeah, we wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, you know, computers, electricity, um, uh, 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 videography. All of this, you know, our electric lights, none of this would have been possible without Tesla. But, um, you know, at, at the height of his career, he really didn't have a lot of room in his life for psychic phenomena, magic, spiritualism, things like that. He had actually had been approached at one time uh, uh, by a group that was um, pushing for the research of psychic phenomena, and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. It wasn't until much, much okay. later in his life when he became interested in um, Eastern philosophies that he go. started to develop a, uh, a, a, a more of a better understanding of, of, of our reality and how things like that work, uh, you know, along the forms of, of, uh, of, of mysticism, though he was approaching it, you know, with that scientific type of, of attitude. Uh, but, but, you know, he was acknowledging uh, at, at that point that, like you said, that the, you know, that the universe is a lot more uh, uh, complex and mysterious than, you know, we can even dare to imagine. Uh, but it was obvious that Tesla had abilities of his own that, um, at first, he didn't really attribute to anything other than just his normal physical capabilities. And what I mean is Tesla had this amazing ability that when he was working on an idea, at some point, he would have a vision, as he would describe it. A download. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Where he would suddenly see, and and his uh, invention of the AC motor came about this, uh, uh, where he would suddenly see whatever it was he was working at appear in front of his eyes, and uh, it, it and his description sounds almost almost like a hologram, and he could rotate it with his mind Whoa. in any different direction. He could take it apart bit by bit, Whoa. and he. Would and he would know at that instant how this was going to be built. And uh, with the AC motor, he actually, he was walking in a park talking to a friend when he saw this in front of him. And he actually, he had to uh, uh, quickly, he, he took a stick and, and drew out the schematics in the dirt. Uh, even though he said that afterwards, he he really didn't even have to do that because it was already imprinted on his mind on how to build the AC motor. So then any of his important inventions for the rest of his life, that is the way that he would see them. And he knew instinctively that when he would have this vision, that this thing would work exactly as he was thinking it that's was going some to cra work. That's crazy, dude. That's right. I, uh, well, and, and he worked on a lot of different things throughout his life. And he said that if he was working on something, on an idea, and he didn't see a vision of it, he come to realize that that was because it wasn't going to work, that he would have to take a different tact, you know, on, on trying to uh, develop it. But, you know, AC motor, you know, uh, uh, radio technology, you know, stuff along those lines, uh, uh, that was how his inventions came to him. <laughs> No, I'm with you, and I so I, I'm not gonna. I don't want to sound crude or anything, but I literally wrote a joke about the seven stages of grief of pooping your pants, and it came out <laughs> fully, fully formed, fully formed. I woke up one day and it was completely written out. I love the shit. that you compared Tesla's inventions to your poop joke. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you said fully formed. I was like, the shit you took. No, or the, no, or the no. Joke? The joke. The joke. The oh, joke. Dear. But but That's what? The best thing I've ever why? Heard. Like fully? Because it's a long joke, Sam. Is it like you talking about like a straight download? Yeah. Like, yeah. 
Most, I'm going to tell you something. The gods maybe, wanted you to have, write that poop joke, brother. Well, maybe, I'm just saying that maybe uh, I'm the comic I am and not as far as I am because most of my jokes come pre-written. You know what? I, I have a theory about that. If, if it's possible that if the idea of eternal recurrence is correct, which is that we just keep doing the same things over and over again, that... Those are just things that, you know. I've I mean, written those jokes in the past a, a life. A million times, dude. <laughs> and I'm just oh, like, I'll try it again. <laughs> you hack. It, it didn't work in the, it did work last time. Maybe this time. Ripping yourself off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm Carlos from I don't believe myself. that, but that's, I, that's, no, that's a possibility. It's interesting, <laughs> dude. Do we just keep living the same life over and over again until we perfect it? That is an interesting thing, dude. Do you get downloads from something else? What do you mean? You're a comic. You obviously get downloads for, but have you ever got a download on like, Oh, being yeah. a dad, like being a, where you instantly just a got re it, like recipe you were there. or something like that. You know? you know what I do get, not to get too far off, is I read people really well. As Johnny knows, I come from psychics. We have a baby in our family sees dead people. I'm uh, I'm part of we we have psychics. And dude, you, you, I don't know if you see me on the road, Bob. Be like, oh, dude, do you do this? He's like, yeah, I do do that. I'm like, yeah, I I I I, I can read energy like that. Yeah, you do call people out when, like, when they're in line. I'm like, oh, like, you do yeah. that? I'm like, how'd you know? And I, I do, you know what I really do it with? Intelligence that come to my show. Like all these federal people. Yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, you're definitely intelligent. He's like, uh, and they'll come up to the like, you know, I'm really intelligent. So I just, <laughs> I just like your show, bro. It's a good show. I'm like, it's all good, dude. It's all good. But why, why do you find, because I feel that like, like, it's so, in Tesla's such an interesting guy because he had all these great inventions. He dies broke, which is such a tragedy in life. Edison comes and just steals his milkshake, takes all the credit, <laughs> total BS. And it's just like, wh why do you think Tesla was such a unique character? You know, there, there are people who have written that Tesla was the great mind he was because he wasn't human. That, you know, he was oh, an extraterrestrial yes. that was, you know, dropped here on, on planet Earth. But, you know, I, I think that does a real disservice to, to humans because I think that humans are capable of absolutely amazing things. And Tesla is a perfect example of, of, what we can accomplish as 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 human beings i mean you know there there have been a few other people throughout history i think leonardo da vinci uh would be somebody uh, uh who would be akin to uh, a tesla if da vinci had been born say around the same time as as tesla you know who knows uh, 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 what kind of great things he could have, you know, could have accomplished. So, I mean, I think that Tesla just had that type of mind and, and possibly, you know, he, he had that ability to tap into, you know, what the ancients would have called the Akashic records, you know, which, which is that, that, giant database in the sky so to speak uh you know it's 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 been described by you know some psychics as like you know the the, the vast universal library uh, but i do think that uh you know the that our universe and probably you know the multiverse i mean we're not the only universe you know out there is um uh, made up of information that that is our reality that yes. we that that we and everything else in creation is information and that if if you know how to do it or if you're born with that ability to do it you can tap into that information base and and accomplish fantastic things i think a lot of people do that every day you know, some of them to the greatness that tesla was uh, uh but they're you know uh, Probably a lot of them are working more behind the behind the scenes, or are concentrated on one or two different types of of, of favorite subjects. While Tesla was the type of guy that um, he was almost like like Prince in music. All right, oh, you know, Prince had, as he described it, the music was constantly coming out of him. You know, it was just. Mm. It just every day, every minute, there was music coming out of him, and he had to write it down. 
And I think Tesla was like that when it came to science, that this stuff was just constantly flowing out of him, and he had to constantly work on it. And that was one of Tesla's problems, was that he would be working hard on one thing, and all of a sudden, he would get an idea for something else, and abandon what he had been previously working on to go and, you know, work on uh, uh, something else that that. that uh, came to him. Uh, you know, he had a couple of favorite things. Uh, uh, one of them was the, um, the development of uh, wireless technology. You know, he wanted, uh, he knew that there would be ways that you could deliver energy, power, electricity, uh, wirelessly. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, uh, some people have kind of mistaken that idea with free energy that, that he was working on a free energy product to, uh, deliver wireless electricity. That was two completely separate things. His initial ideas for his, um, wireless technology was going to be based off of the technology that was available at the time. And that meant burning coal to uh, 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 drive uh, boilers to then generate the electricity. However, he also was working on ideas to uh, uh, get electricity from the atmosphere in a form of, of they look almost like solar panels, but he said that uh, uh, it, it would uh, absorb cosmic rays, the, the the energy that's constantly coming down to Earth from space, and that uh, these rays would be able to absorb this energy night or day. Those are two completely different things. If Tesla had been, you know, able to continue his work, he later may have been able to develop the ability or the technology for uh, wireless energy distribution using a free energy source. Uh, but at the time, you know, he was using conventional technology. Yeah. I'm So I, I find Tesla so interesting. I'm constantly trying, I'm slowly but surely starting to understand what the ether is. What is hmm. your thoughts on what the ether is? Well, in in Tesla's day, the ether was a universal, was considered a universal medium, all right, that allowed electricity, heat, cold, whatever, to get from point A from point B. Um, it was thought that the ether was what allowed, say, like uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the heat from the sun to reach planet Earth or for light to travel from, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, across the universe. It, it, it wasn't conceived that... Uh, there wasn't any conceptions on how these kinds of electromagnetic energies could travel through the universe without something to travel through, akin to um, how sound travels through the atmosphere. All right, uh, uh, that's th that's how it was originally perceived that uh, uh, electromagnetic energies could travel throughout the uh, uh, the universe, and. Um, Tesla was a believer in the ether, um, uh, and and they were working on what the ether exactly was. Nobody was, was was really quite sure. Later on, Tesla came up with the idea that um, that light and electromagnetic energies were waves and could actually propagate uh, without any kind of medium to propagate through. I mean, they they, they were energetic enough that they could uh, uh, propagate all of their own. Now, saying that, I've been wondering recently whether or not this the, the whole thing about dark matter and dark energy that everybody you know in, in, in astrophysics and and physics are talking about that the universe is made up of like gosh what is it it's like maybe 10 percent matter you know our matter and then everything else is this dark matter and dark energy whether or not there that is the ether that everybody was talking about because the, they're basically saying the same thing now as what they were saying in the uh, uh, 19th century about 
what the ether was considered. That, uh, but now they're saying that uh, um, uh, the modern idea of of dark matter and dark energy is how um, gravitational waves uh, 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 propagate throughout the universe. So you know, it's it's, and you know, I mean, if you would if you would ask you know a physicist, oh well, you know, it sounds like the uh, you know the 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 e, uh, that dark energy is just a reemergence of the ether theory. Oh boy, you'd probably, <laughs> they'd probably smack you with the palm of their hand. <laughs> uh, but okay. it's interesting to think about, you know? <laughs> yeah. I do find it very, very interesting. Ether and, uh, and the dark matter it is a name given the mysterious influence drives the acceleration expansion of the universe. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, well, just just go and compare, you know, uh, the, the the original writings about uh, uh, what scientists thought the ether was, you know, and not the more not the modern interpretations, because I mean they'll always put that uh, that 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 debunking type of attitude, you know, like oh well, these stupid scientists thought the ether was, you know, what was this? No, go go and read how uh, some very famous scientists, you know, in their day were considering the ether and compare it to how scientists are now talking about uh, uh, dark matter, dark energy. Interesting, dude. Super duper interesting. Do you believe in time travel, my friend? I do, but... (laughs) Uh, um, It's 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 one of the it's one of these subjects that I've been uh, fascinated with uh, for for a long time, and and one of my favorite theories about the whole, uh, uh, at least part of the UFO phenomena, is that uh, some of these ships could actually be time travelers, uh, maybe not necessarily um, human time travelers. But uh, I wonder if the ability to be able to travel from star system to star system uh, doesn't require some kind of ability to tr- uh, to time travel in order to uh, uh, reach the vast distances. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it could very well be that um, time travelers from our future or even our past, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't think we're the only technologically based uh, intelligent life that has emerged on this planet, you know, uh, maybe has realized from history books that the UFO phenomena was a thing during these, this time and are using that as a cover to, uh, to come and see, you know, how things are. Cause I mean, if you had the ability to try and travel, you know, you'd want to go into the past and see how, <laughs> how stuff actually, uh, you know, was going on and what better way to do it. If somebody actually came across you, you know, you're not going to go and say, Oh yeah, you know, we're your, uh, uh, we're your descendants from uh, uh, 500 years in the future. You know, you're going to say, oh, no, we're from uh, Zeta reticuli. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Zeta reticuli. Those shady people are <laughs> Zeta Disticuli. <laughs> very, very, very. So my computer just died with the note. Oh, I can look on my phone. Um, yeah, I find it interesting. I find it all interesting. Like, can ta- time travel happen? What are the implications of time traveling happening? Find it interesting, dude. And uh, again, yeah, well, and I, you know, I think that there, there could be like a natural phenomena too that, uh, that can create, uh, maybe time travel and, and that's like time slips oh, really? you know, where, yeah, where, where, where people will suddenly find themselves, albeit briefly in what appears to be a, you know, a different time, uh, uh, uh and then, you know, back you know, at least some of them you will never know uh, uh come back again to uh, to tell the tale and i suspect that that is a natural phenomena who knows what causes it but it seems to happen a lot uh, uh to people what are some of the accounts of that you've heard Oh well, you know, there's the uh, uh, there's there, there's the famous one of the two school teachers uh, uh, back in the early 1900s who were uh, they were visiting uh, uh, Versailles in uh, France and came across uh, what appeared to be 
uh, uh, people from the uh, uh, earlier. Um, oh gosh, um, now I can't. Th- I can't. I can't think what time period that. Uh, uh, um, oh gosh, who who was the queen in France who said, "Let them eat cake." You know, the, the peasants oh, don't have any bread. That, right? What? Yeah, so yeah, it was, that, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it uh, was during that time period. They came across people and and buildings, uh, you know, in this uh, vast courtyard in in Paris that uh, shouldn't be there, and uh, 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 and then uh, later when they came back, none of it was there. So I mean, they they thought that uh, somehow that they were uh, actually experiencing past uh, events, and uh, there's there's a, a very famous, more recent one that happened in uh, England, where a uh, a policeman in Liverpool uh, was out shopping with his wife, and uh, all of a sudden the uh, uh, he found himself uh, the road around him and the buildings around him uh, took on the appearance of uh, what appeared to be like the 1950s. And uh, the, the, the bookstore that he was going to go into wasn't a bookstore. It was actually a, um, uh, uh, gosh, what was it? It is like a um, um, clothing store. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, and he, st- he, he stood outside of it and he saw another young woman who was dressed like he was. And she started to go into this store. And when she did that, all of a sudden everything changed back in front of them and they were in a bookstore and he was like, what happened? And she was like, yeah, I thought this was a clothing store. I was going to go in, but now it's a bookstore. You know, that's, that's, see, that's a perfect example of a time slip. I wouldn't die. Wow. I, I, I think going back to somewhat of what Johnny was saying about living the same life over and over again, what if time is like a book and it's just stacked on top of each other? It's not mm-hmm. like linear, but st- stacked like this. and Like interstellar? Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's just like you just keep going back to the same time that all time is happening at one time. Like when you jump around a book, like you could be on page 50, right? And that right there is the reality of the moment. But what if you jump to – Page 200, that becomes reality. Then you jump back to page 10, that becomes reality. But in reality, they're all going on at the same moment. It just where are you in that story? Well, don't you feel that way sometimes? Don't, aren't there times in your past that you're particularly connected to that you feel like as though they just happened or yes. could, could still be yes. happening? Yes. I feel that way yes. sometimes. Yes, 100%. I feel Tesla... That- Tesla had an experience very similar to that when uh, uh, at his laboratory in New York, when he was uh, um, he was hit by an arc of electricity uh, from one of his uh, Tesla coils, and he said in that moment he felt like that he was outside of time and space. He said that his experience showed him that the universe is actually that 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 time is non-existent <laughs> that the past present and future all exist at the same time and he said that he could see it all all at once and if, but if it wasn't for his assistant uh, fortunately turning off the machine and saving his life you know he he would never have been lived long enough to tell his yeah. story but you know uh modern day physicists have have uh, come up with a theory called the block universe which basically says that time, rather than being temporal, and I'm I, I, I'm not describing this properly, can be thought of more. And and you have to understand, we're trying to, to conceive of a fourth dimensional reality in three dimensions. That time could be considered more a location. That uh, 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 that that the past would be down the street and the present is, you know, like where you are now. And then the future is, you know, another place down the street. And all you have to do is just walk down the street to get to the past and, you know, walk down the, the other side of the street to get to the future. But of course, since we are three dimensional uh, 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 creatures, we can't do that. I mean, only if you are able to get beyond the three dimensions, could you even conceive or perceive time in that way? Thus, we are trapped in what appears to us to be linear time. It's interesting. I think it's interesting. Again, I'm telling you, it's all mysticism, dude. <laughs> People think I'm crazy. 
But just remember that so, everything's mysticism. You say ma like magic, right? Yeah. Do you include uh, our miracles part of that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All so that. I was just wondering. But okay, it's yeah. it's mostly about m manipulation of energy in many different ways, like mm -hmm. voice to skull technology, which we know the government has. That is straight up like telepath and uh, powers. Your your telepathy. I mean, we're just getting into all this stuff. Reading minds. Your phone reads your mind. Oh that God. is magic. <laughs> it's just magic. And people are like, oh, yeah, the technology is so great. No, dude, they just hardwired magic. They figured out how to take this magic and hardwire it and call it technology, but you still don't believe in mysticism. You're right, because like if you told someone in the 80s, hey, your phone's going to listen to you. Yeah, your That's phone. That's magic. You, you're talking magic. You're talking. Well, you, you, who is that? Are you, are you Chris Angel? Yeah. No, he listens. In the eighties, nobody knew about Chris oh, yeah, Angel. You're right. that was more like he was like four, and he was annoying everybody. Um, so let's let's uh, let's get into the final point here. You got a new book possibly coming out? Or you're working on it right now called Geff the Talking Mongoose. I'm all about this. The eighth wonder of the world. Tell me a little bit about it. No, that's 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 an older book. Oh, it's uh, an old book. My yeah, apologies. That's a, no, no, that's that's fine. No, that was really. And it, we're actually in the process now of of working on a book about uh, uh, time travel or the mysteries of time. You know, I don't want to uh, 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 put it entirely into the realm of time travel because then people think of you know eccentric inventors uh, 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 building a DeLorean that can travel back and forth through time. And, and no, I'm talking about the the mysteries of time you know which you know may include uh, uh eccentric inventors who who may have stumbled across some kind of uh, uh, mysteries uh, but like i said uh, before about uh, uh, time slips you know i think that uh you know, Mother Nature is kind of showing us that there are ways that uh, that that time is not uh, linear as we think it is. That there's more to it, and uh, and and could be accessible somehow. But uh, you know how that would be with our current understanding of physics. You know, that's that's the unknown part. But Jeff the Talking Mongoose, that's one of my favorite books. I uh, uh, I wrote that a couple of years ago. And it was released by uh, 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 Global Communications Interlight Publications, uh, um, uh, uh, publishing company. <laughs> and what is the the talking moose like? Uh, what yeah, happened? Yeah. What happened? Well, the, this was a case that happened on the Isle of Man uh, in the nineteen uh, thirties. And uh, it's 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 an extremely complicated case. But uh, uh, what happened was that uh, uh, this this family from England uh, moved into this old farmhouse in uh, on the Isle, and uh, uh, started having almost uh, a ghostly poltergeist types of experiences that started then to develop a voice that uh, they would hear coming from the walls of this house, this voice, very high-pitched, uh, screeching type of voice almost, that claimed it wa wasn't a ghost, that it was a living physical creature, a mongoose, that had been brought to the island uh, by a farmer uh, about 50 years previously, him and a bunch of others, to... Um, to hunt and kill rabbits because the rabbit population had gotten out of control on the island and uh, uh, the farmers needed something uh, to take care of them. So this thing said its name was Jeff, G-E-F, and that uh, it had been living a long time. And uh, thanks to uh, uh, the farmer whose name was, uh, whose last name was Irving, it was uh, uh, uh him, his wife, and then his 13-year-old daughter, whose name was Vori, that uh, he taught it how to talk. And uh, this was a phenomena that uh, went on for a number of years, made newspaper headlines all across the, uh, the world when it was happening, and is just an absolutely uh, a fascinating story. So he, he, he could talk? Yes. Yes, that's that's uh, that was its claim to fame. It it, it could talk. It uh, 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 
it had like a a, a pretty full vocabulary, uh, including his, uh, favorite curse words. I guess it, well, uh, it 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 cussed like a sailor when it was mad. Uh, it would it would do things though that seemed almost um, poltergeisty, you know, like like rather than being an actual physical creature, though Vori actually managed to get pictures of it at one point, which is included in the book. Uh, but it had like instead of having paws, it had like uh, uh, little hands almost. What? With, with little stub with little stubby fingers the uh, uh the uh, J- james irving his wife and vori uh, a couple of times it would stick its hands out through um holes in the wall uh it, this it was an old uh, uh, um stone farmhouse that when they moved in uh james built um walls uh, wooden walls uh, uh, on the inside to kind of act as a, a insulation, you know, because uh, uh, just bear us cold, you know, at in this place. And this thing lived in these in that crawl space in between the uh, 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 the wooden uh, in, insulating walls and then the stone walls. But there were not holes, and it would stick its hands at times through this uh, uh, through these holes, so people could see that it had like little tiny fingers it would also if there were people at the house that he didn't like he would throw stuff at them <laughs> through these holes uh, including uh jets of water that uh he claimed it was him pissing on them <laughs> look at that sam look at the feet oh yeah the little hands yeah yep that's feet that's yeah there, so it, there was there was a uh, um, um, uh, a psychic investigator from England by the name of Harry Price who spent a lot of time investigating this case and actually uh, uh, wrote a book about it that uh, unfortunately it didn't it only sold like about you know a couple hundred copies. I managed uh, my publisher actually managed to get a hold of a copy of this book very rare and I included it in Jeff the Talking Mongoose because the uh, uh, James Irving kept a daily diary of all the things that happened over the years. And I mean, this diary is just, uh, it's extensive and it's very matter of fact too. That's, that's the interesting thing about it, you know, because it would be like, uh, uh, eight o'clock in the morning, Jeff, uh, uh, said that he wanted bacon for breakfast and that in return, he would catch and kill a rabbit for our dinner tonight. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the first Twitter. The, uh, the interesting thing about the story is that years later, the daughter, Vori, who, um, when she got older, she actually moved back to England in order to, uh, uh, uh work in, um, in a factory for the war effort. Uh, uh, years later in the seventies, she allowed a reporter for fate magazine to interview her before then she had refused all interviews. And I mean, this, she was, you know, uh, fairly old at this time. And she said, yes, everything that happened happened. She goes, nobody was making it up because she had been accused naturally of being a ventriloquist in the day that she was that. Yeah. Yeah. That she oh, was that somehow she was, faking it. Oh, like right. imagine you're that good. You go, well, let's go get some fruit. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You know, back, back then people thought that ventriloquism, that you could actually throw your voice and, and actually make it sound like it was coming from, you know, like a closet or underneath the furniture. They didn't understand that, you know, it's, it's just merely distraction. And, and she said, she says, look, if I was that good of a ventriloquist, I would not be, you know, semi-retired now. I'd be a millionaire because I would have taken that ability onto, you know, onto the stage and made a bunch of money, you know. But she said, no, it 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 all actually happened, and that it actually ruined my life. She said, she said, uh, uh, I I I never got married because I was afraid that if, say, a potential husband 
found out I was that girl, huh. the, 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 the Dolby spook, as she was called in the newspapers at the time, that he wouldn't want to marry me. So she, she didn't even bother. She said she was just afraid the publicity would catch up to her. But yeah, I mean, you know, and you would think that at that stage in her life, if she had been faking it, she would have come forward and say, yeah, you know, it was this, I faked it all. I mean, you know, what difference at that point would, would it have made? But no, she said, nope, it all actually happened exactly as my dad wrote it down. <laughs> Did the supernatural occurrences end with uh, little Jeff's? Uh, body like once he expired did did they end or did things continue to happen there well what had happened was that um as time went by uh, uh, uh jeff would uh you know he would say well you know i'm gonna go and uh, uh, uh take a trip and go someplace and you won't hear from me for a while and then he'd be you know he'd disappear for a few days to a few weeks and then eventually he just disappeared and never came back you know, around that time, Vori was uh, 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 in her late teens and was um, was moving out. Her her dad was sick. Uh, he he developed a, a cancer Aww. and had had to be taken taken care of. And at that point, you know, Jeff had pretty much disappeared. Now um, they had they had older children that were already adults when they first moved to the island. And these adult children didn't move with them. And they always thought naturally that it was the, you know, the youngest girl uh, uh, who who was faking it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being, you know, being the adults and, you know, you know, think about it. I mean, you're in your 30s and you have a sister who's 13 and, uh, you know, you've got a talking mongoose in the house. What are you going to think? Right. Yeah. You know, the, the, the youngest child is doing all this and she's getting away with it, too. <laughs> But yeah. um, the oldest daughter said that while when she was in the house helping take care of her dad on his sick bed, that she experienced uh, 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 a number of she never heard or saw Jeff, but she experienced poltergeist types of activity, what? ghostly type of activity, which, you know, was going on at the same, you know, at, at the same time. And people were attributed it to you know to 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 jeff so obviously there was still some kind of energy going on but it had waned to the point where you know the voice was no longer being heard it's just crazy yeah. it is it is just the craziest story but it is fascinating and the thing about it is is it that is fascinating. It, it was written down as it happened that's what I mean. It's, uh, you know, and it's unfortunate because, you know, at the time th they had, um, you know, like rudimentary recording devices, you know, like, uh, um, I don't, I don't think they had reel to reel tapes, but they probably had wire recorders that if there was electricity in the area, unfortunately, you know, like they were way, way out in the boondocks with no electricity, you know, that somebody would have, could have been, uh, able to take a wire recorder out there and record this thing's voice but it was just you know the wrong place at the wrong time you know <laughs> wow wow i would love to see a talking mongoose i know right you yeah well and th they would have too you know they would have loved to have actually gotten you know like a clear view of it and seen it's you know it it talking but it was very elusive they heard the voice they occasionally they would catch a glimpse of something small and furry <laughs> you know like running across the rafters in the uh, in the house but as with the exception of the daughter Vori uh, getting some pictures of it, um, it it was never really seen. I'm surprised no one tried to breed it or nothing. Or there's like this like lineage of like, hey, do you want do you want this mongoose over here? He used to talk. <laughs> His grandpa used <laughs> well, to talk. 
one uh and there were attempts uh early on to kill it you know oh, wow. uh, uh james you know i mean he at first you know they were afraid of this thing naturally you know at first they thought it was a ghost and uh, uh and, and they were like well if it's not a ghost it's some kind of varmint so you know i'm going to put out traps for it and those never worked and in fact you know jeff n always said that it wasn't a ghost and in fact jeff said that he was afraid of ghosts <laughs> yeah i mean it's i mean the world is so interesting it's just mm -hmm. so interesting right i mean yeah i, I, yeah. I just <laughs> Man, I would love to see a talking mongoose. <laughs> a talking anything, really. Talking you know, anything. It really would have fit right yeah. in with your childhood, Sam, with, you know, the, the hat that disappeared. Yeah, items for sure. would have fit right in, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Tim, thank you for coming out one more time. Tell them where they can find you. Oh, sure. Well, you can find all of my books. Probably the easiest way is on Amazon.com. Just uh, type in my name, Tim R. Swartz, and they'll all come uh, tumbling out for your reading pleasure, both uh, print and ebooks. And uh, I always like to say some of them you'll, you can also find at your uh, favorite local bookstore or library. And please patronize your favorite local bookstore and uh, library. Yeah. And uh, my website is. Uh, 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 Believe it or not, it's called conspiracyjournal.com. But uh, I say uh, 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 none of the political stuff, just the fun stuff like UFOs, ghosts, and cryptid creatures. And uh, it's uh, conspiracyjournal.com. Uh, uh, we've got all the uh, weird news and information that they don't want you to know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for coming on. Guys, great show. Thank you guys so much. Depending on when this comes out, either... Uh, tomorrow or on Friday, tonight, tomorrow night or Friday night, my live uh, revival again is going on. Please join us there at the rabbit hole, you know, hang and bang. Let's rock and roll. Got a great lineup and uh, come join that. Check out Sam Tripoli for all my dates. I'm doing shows everywhere. Uh, finally, again, March 3rd, I'm doing my live show. I mean, I'm shooting my special in Hollywood. Come get weird and enjoy this we're going to have a little talk about this uh this episode and enjoy all the sneak peeks or the highlights from my other podcasts thank you guys enjoy the extra all right let's get into a little recap of what we thought to, about the show uh i loved it what did you guys think different weird talking mongoose it's a nice mix yeah it's a nice little mix up what would you what would you have asked about this stuff what I, well, I was thinking, like, dude, I mean, like, a mongoose is talking. Like, if you guys could have any animal talk to you, what animal would you want to speak to you? Yeah, you can pick any animal. This is a good question. Yeah. I'm going lizard. You're going lizard? That, I, 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 I'm going to say that's a pretty lazy pick. Because I want to ask you didn't them even about think. The, uh, I want I want to ask them about the lizard people. Yeah, you're not taking this seriously. You're not taking this seriously. You're, you 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 you're just going through your road of dicks of animals and just because <laughs> you heard lizard. The roll of dicks, the yeah, first thing that came out of the roll of dicks. earlier in the show. That's what it was. You said lizard people. Yeah, so I said, I, li uh, I like to talk to uh, lizards. Uh, all right, talk. all right. let me see your roll of dicks. Who are you guys pulling out of the roll of dicks? I'm taking it seriously. I mean, like, cheetah would be nice. I'd like to talk to a cheetah. Are you asking it? Or one of those monkeys. He's uh, whacking off at the zoo. I want to know what Big, they're talking does about. Does Bigfoot count? Does Ooh. Bigfoot count as a talking animal? It does not. No, like, so well, I can't hey, pick Bigfoot. Okay. You can't pick Bigfoot. You got to pick an animal. That I might would be want a to no talk to the bear who ate Timothy Treadwell if it's still alive. Ooh, okay. Good call. Can, well, to what, know what happened. Why were you really hungry? Like, now, was he annoying you by talking so much? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Like, him. What was it annoying thinking you guys were friends? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah. Get away. Hey, man, can I come hang out? No, That's you can't. That's not how Treadwell. Hey, you're, hey, buddy, can we hang out? Yeah, you're cock-blocking me right now. I'm trying to fuck this other bear. <laughs> I'd like to talk to one of 100%. the monkeys that beat off at the zoo and find out what they're beating off to. Uh -oh. Or that one that maybe fucks that frog in yeah. that video. <laughs> yeah. 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 A bonobo? Is that, is that the one? A bonobo? Which Those are supposed the, to be really ho like, horny horned ones, right? up. Yeah, those bonobos. Where they're just like they're just staring at everybody as they're pounding their pud. I, I want to know like those gorillas that just stare at children. You know, like and do, have you seen that one where they do magic? I don't tricks? want them do staring at children, touching themselves, Johnny. They're this not is touching a themselves. Christian they're, show. They're like uh, just staring. Yeah, just like really interested. How about you know, uh, absorb? Uh, hombre, the 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 gorilla they shot. Oh yeah, 
Okay. I'd like to you talk to he's him. He's dead, Sam. You can't talk to I him. I know, but if he was... Well, I mean, we're also talking about him talking, too, so neither of these scenarios are real, okay, Johnny? <laughs> no, that's all tough. Right. You're right. Okay. You're right. That's fair. All right, all right. So, like, I'd like to go, dude, do you regret grabbing the kid? <laughs> I was just trying to help! <laughs> seance. We can just seance. I was just trying to help. Now, what I did find interesting about him, and I always find this interesting about anybody in the world of conspiracies. Now, even though he had talked about... He had talked about how he doesn't like to get into the political yeah. conspiracies. His website does have conspiracy into it, in it, into it. So what I always find very interesting is that when somebody into conspiracies is really sure that other conspiracies aren't real. Yeah. Right. So like what I've learned on this show is that anything is possible. And just so you know, I love the interview. I bought the book. So that's all. That's the best way I could show you how much I enjoy the interview. But I so, do find it interesting when you're like, nah. I mean, like, I mean, like, you could be like, oh, I don't think Trump is president, right? You could be that. That's either he is or he isn't, right? But it's like to be like, oh, flat earth, there's no way. Well, that's an is or isn't too to me, isn't it? Don't you think? Well, I mean, it's like... It's like, I don't know, man. Maybe I, I like, I, I guess, I guess maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. I could be wrong. That, I mean, that seems to be a, if a you're fact not open minded to anything. Like, okay, it's possible. Yeah, I mean, the guy said he's seen some stuff that made him think it wasn't. I get what Sam says. As a conspiracy theorist, I need you to stay open minded at pretty much at all times. I, I, dude, in a weird I, it, kind it's of way. just very weird when people. They used to tell me you don't keep your mind so open that your brain falls out. That's what they used to tell me. So. Oh, Johnny, yeah. well played, bro. Well. Played, well played. Uh, I think it's interesting, dude. No, but I get what you're saying. What do you guys think of I my theory that people. all technology is just magic? Not all technology. Man. Not all, but yeah. a lot of this, this secret stuff that they're doing. What's the difference? Is what I would say. What? What's the difference? I mean, it doesn't matter really, does it? Well, because to me, because to me. The difference is that they're always trying to tell us that this is science and it's very cold and cut and dry. When in reality, it is very, very mystical and it it fits into everything we've talked about, ancient technologies, yeah. that 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 we as people could possibly be doing a lot of this stuff. Let me see a magician build an iPhone and I'll, I'll be on board with that one. Yeah, but th what if the iPhone has the magic components in it? And that's just ripping off an iPhone. That was like Joe Rogan's biz. Like, really? How long? I, if I if I if I sent you into a forest with just an axe, how long before you can send an email? <laughs> it is, it's a it's a miracle that we have as a species. I heard achieved. something yesterday, dude. That that Google has like twenty thousand engineers just work. Working on um, when you put in a search engines twenty thousand just working on their search engine. That's their biggest business, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, but I think they're starting to hurt because I think people are starting to use Chat GPT more. Also, their search engines—they're all scams now. They're all ass. Their, their results, the ads that people pay for, are scams. It's ass. Ass. What do you mean? It's real like ass. Porno? I mean, What's that? What are you saying? Ass. What do you ass. Mean? Their search. Their search. Engine is ass, not good ass, bad ass. Oh, okay. and it's a lie. Which it's is weird because ass is both great and bad at the same time, depending on its context, depending right? On. What's it up? What's like, up to you? Yeah. There was somebody say somebody was saying that that Dak Dak Prescott played like ass. Yeah. How much ass? And they showed this gorgeous black woman with the fattest ass you saw just walking. But I'm like, that's a good ass. So did he play like good ass? Mm. You show a flat ass, you'd be like, look how much ass he played like. Am I weird on that? No, I get it. How much ass? How much Good ass? Good ass or bad ass? There's some, there's some bad ass out there, and this sounds right. Uh, okay, hey, if you could meet one cryptid, who would you want to meet? Obviously, Bigfoot. He's on the list, for sure. But hmm. am, am I assured of being not attacked by the cryptid? Let's just say you observe him. Because I would love to see, like, the... the Mothman, probably. You want to see the Chicago Mothman? If I'm safe from him, yeah. Like a, a moth? You want to see a giant not, Mothman? I mean, no, that, that he's more than that. You dude. wouldn't want to see like a uh, mermaid. I'm going with Loch Ness. 
You're going Loch Ness. Oh, Loch Ness I like monster. that. Again, somewhat yeah. of a lizard, but yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> It's an amphibian to be yeah, exact. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's amphibian. true. That's true. I just feel like the Mothman is a little more. I would like to talk to the men in black. Are they cryptids? No, or the, I don't think so. uh, was it black indigenous of people of color? I would like to uh, talk to them. <laughs> Did you see the new True Detective uh, premiere? Ooh. No, I did. I uh, people are just like it's just. It's crazy. I mean, it's a lot of true. Uh, it's a lot of Twin Peaks nods, I would say. In it. But it's you're like, into it because I, I heard people going, I'm "Let me it. guess, gayness, no. white people are bad." Yeah, but you gotta get past it. the story. Is you gotta good. get past. Why is it always you gotta get past? Because why do I gotta get that's, past that's, it, Johnny? I mean, why can't it be like this is garbage? It's not garbage, though. It's good. I promise. Who's, the who's reviews in are it? amazing. It's Jodie Foster. I mean, she's the one. She's the the one. And then it's that female boxer, that black female boxer with the dimple piercings. Uh, you know, she's the wow. Well, what's her name? Ke- Keely or something like that. I don't know. Look it up. Uh, a bunch of females. Tell them about our female, our, our female flight crew. We we, we participated oh, in. I was going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> um, True Detective Night Country is Night uh, Country. What's her name? You fucking funky. Uh, Callie Reese. Remember her, the boxer. She's really good. She's the other lead. It's two female leads. Uh, oh, that's her. Yeah, she's, oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's, yeah, and she's the lead. They gave she's her the like, lead. She's the other. Her and Jodie Foster. Yeah. Oh man. And the guy who plays Kenny Powers' brother in Eastbound and Down. He's, oh, I love that guy. Yeah, love, no, not not that guy, right? Oh, the weird skinny guy. The, that's in like all of his stuff. Hawkins, something Hawkins, with his big yeah. teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's I, I, a great actor. He's great. And he yeah. goes back and forth from like comedy to yeah, drama. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. This guy right here. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's a different dude. John Hawks. That's it. Yeah, that yeah. guy. It was so funny. John Hawks. You want to hear a funny story about him? Please. So uh, this is way back in the day. I was, um, when I used to play the Palms with Paul Hughes, It was I, I had just done Jane McCarthy. They were having me play the Palms. And we got done with the weekend. We're at the uh, gig. It turns out like they overbooked our flight. Not everybody was allowed to get on. So uh, for credit, they give us more money. He was there at the airport at this time. He's still a big actor at the time. And he was um, with a girlfriend, uh, some chick he had brought, but they were arguing because she didn't give up the ass, right, the, the, <laughs> over the weekend. So he he just got on a plane, left her at the airport. She ended up just going and hanging out with Paul Hughes after. That's the craziest. That's the fun. He just put his dude on blast hard. And it's so funny because he was just like waving to her in the window, like I don't want to go. And he totally wanted to go. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, but I gotta get back to Hollywood. It was so, so funny, funny, dude. She didn't give it up, which is hilarious. But yeah, I, I thought it was great. I knew course. a comic who would like, hey, you want to come here with me? You're not gonna be on your period, right? <laughs> he would ask him right out the gate. That's not period time, right? <laughs> He's not sitting across from me at the table right now. Is so he? a buddy, no, 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 no. A, a buddy of mine, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> but he became a big comic in LA, in uh, Canada. When he was down in LA, he just had a weird run. And, but at Dublin's, there was this go- absolutely gorgeous waitress who was from Canada and he loved her. Like everyone loved this chick. And he's like, hey, man, I'm big in Canada. You want to come hang out? She's like, I'd love to go back to Canada. So he buys her a ticket, bro. She flies back, ghosts him. Damn. <laughs> hey, man, that's on you, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah, have you seen that tweet going around that if you got molested by Stephen Hawkins, that's on you? <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. That is oh awful. Uh, what is this? That's the true detective season. It's interesting. I always love it when there's a split between the... I don't. I Great well, dude. I take the, the audience, audience score. score. It's still seventy seventy percent for something this political. I think is uh, is solid. I just like. I just can't take it. Can we just? Can we just? Watch? As long as the guy that Nick Pizzolato guy is doing it, I'm there because he's good. He's a talent. Can we just enjoy a show? Does it have? To be fucking war all the time. Well, this one's got a lot of supernatural elements. Well, I'm, like. I'll watch it because I love Jodie Foster, but so I, she's great. So, so I really watched. Good. So my dad told me to watch this Mexican series. And I What's watched, it called? Uh, it's called uh, Mi Amigo. 
No. <laughs> if that was it, it would be amazing. It's it called, would be so great. It's called, it's called Senor Avila. It's, it's, a, it's like a, a, a drama. Oh, yeah, Senor Avila. By, by HBO. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know if you've seen it. It's oh, on HBO. HBO Espanol? Yeah, they have it. And I watched it. And I'm going to tell you, it's really good because no political shit, no racist shit. Yeah. It's straight Mexican. I'm pretty sure they have their own political Dude. content, but I'm not looking at it like that. It's just straight. Dude, you have movies. you have weather women that don't wear underwear doing the weather. Okay, <laughs> I mean, like, there's no political correctness yeah. in Latin America. Yeah, if it's you're the weather lady, doesn't have a panty yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, when you do get political, you no longer hang out with Mexicans. You hang out with the white people, yeah. right? And you guys are all the people who are into like the cure now. Like Mexicans are so interesting like they're the generations that come like your kids or the their kids are going to be so emo bro they're going to be uh, like with the like hair over their head they don't even want to speak spanish they're just like whatever dad i'm listening to cure and that's how it's gonna go more see you be like i had to come to this country i had to do podcasting <laughs> I, had to, <laughs> I had to podcast get a job you know so, anyways, hey, well, have you guys noticed on Google? Whenever you Google something, there's no more. Uh, how many pages? Yeah, there is. They got it? busted. Yeah, because they, they got, really. I didn't. So I didn't know funny. how long it. I didn't. I, I just noticed it right now. I went down to go see what pages there was of this, and there is next and only next. What is Demon Slayer? What are you looking up? There? What is I that? just typed in the most random thing. What's Demon? That sounds like some gay shit. And you type in next, and it doesn't. It just gives you the you next. Just page. Randomly typed in Demon Slayer. Yeah. yeah, he did. I watched him do but that. But why, like, why, 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 why did that come to your mind? Demon Slayer. Because we're fucking tinfoil hat. We're Christian young warriors, and we got, we're fucking demon slayers. What are you talking about? Mm. No? No? They They're think interesting. I'm gonna... no. <laughs> Either way, I did not know Google got rid of the fucking 1, 2, 3, 4, All 5, right. 6, 7, 8, All 9, right. 10. All right, we did it. It was a fun conversation. Great show. We loved him. How about them dates? How about them dates? Again, go check out Uh We got West Hills, whatever this comes out. That's on the 19th. Then I'm in Batavia at one of my favorite comedy clubs, the Comedy Vault on the 25th through the 27th. Then Bakersfield for a conspiracy social club with uh, Brian Callen. And then the next night, Huntington Beach. And then I'm changing the date. Guys, the j date now for my live taping of Quiet is, in fact... March 3rd, it is in stone. Bang, bang, bang pow. Bang. How do people get tickets? It's going to be up there. Uh, it's going to be weird. They want me to sell tickets, but we'll see. I don't know, dude. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. How many does it seat? It's going to sit about 200, so nice. I'm hoping to get like one. It sits 200, so you put 150, so you got room for cameras. And I want to do two, two things of 150. Hopefully, it'll work. Uh, anything else, guys? Nope. Check out New Broken Sim. Okay. Hilarious. We don't Hilarious. smoke the same. Yeah, check out We Don't Smoke the Same. And uh, enjoy these highlights. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Like, this is truth. Okay. Here we go. Listen to what she has to say. She's so hot, by the way. I she wish she... 12 inches is. Do you see that? Just in scale? Where is that going? Not in here, okay? The average gal is going to get about that much. Maybe this, if they're a pro. But the rest of that... Completely unmanageable. This is the biggest I've ever seen in real life. But this is fine. It's completely. Wait, hold on. What's she got there? Like five? Is that five? Okay. Yeah, she's at this five. This fabulous. Almost too big. Definitely too big. Fucking sick day. ER. Twenty seven club. And now I'm just skipping my next life. Anything after that is entirely <laughs> unethical. I don't think we know what we're talking about. I think it's hilarious. Oh, she's funny too. I, I think you I know like how big twelve that. inches is. She's funny. Like I mean, she's having a great hair day on that day, oh, she right? Is, isn't she? Like, it's just fire, bro. Good for her. Good for her. What's her TikTok? Can you see it? It's too far away from me. Uh, it's, we uh, should promote her. It says C E R A Gibson. Okay. C E Sarah Gibson. Good for you, Sarah Gibson. With the yeah, this ring. thing went viral. Chicks were sharing it. Much love to you. But she was talking about BJ's, right? I see. It see, she said like not in here and yeah. pointed at her mouth. But do you think it's different for the down there? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, that's I was going to ask you about that, but I didn't want to kind of. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting. This woman, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the Reddit comments. That's what I'm looking. I want. I'm waiting for the woman to speak up. Who's like, I love a big dick. Of course. Uh, let's see. I don't see. Yeah, having a huge 12 inch dick is such a burden. You guys measure from the asshole to the tip too, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, I had a buddy of mine who said he measured from the kitchen sink. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. I think you told me that, actually. That's funny. So, Johnny, a little bit more uh, going back to uh, my house. Ho- my house, as you know, Johnny, you've been to my house. I, li- I live in a nice place. I like right? your house. Yeah, I like I my do. house. I like my your kids love my house. My neighborhood's interesting. Johnny. I like. I like. Well, well my I mean, house is haunted. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You mentioned things are disappearing. Things are disappearing. Like that dick. Huh? Like, like that dick. Like that dick. You know, you just slamming it in there. It's just no, bad. bro. I don't even know what that means. What? What's your? What's your? What do you? What's disappearing? Thing? So far, like. Sneakers have disappeared. I finally found it after months. The 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 house. We listen. What when my brother was coming in, Dana freaked out. She's like, I gotta get someone to help me clean this room. So she had somebody come over and clean the the house. They didn't find the sneakers till much later, and then they just appeared out of nowhere. This, so wait, so the sneakers aren't missing. The the one <laughs> was missing for like two months. That's weird. Yeah. And then it came back. I bought a giant roll of toilet paper, like the 24-pack, gone. It's gone. Nobody knows where this thing is going. How much <laughs> ghost butt are you wiping? You do shit a lot, though. Let's be honest. I do shit a lot. But no, it just disappeared. Nobody knows where that's, this is. That's weird, dude. She, yeah, Dana's like, Dana was doing some clean the other day. She looked at me and goes, still haven't found the toilet paper. Where is this? That's weird. Then I think I have like some tweaker ghost because electronics just disappear. They just disappear. <laughs> like what? What electronics? So so I had something that went from my very nice camera in my house. By the way, everyone's been complimenting me on my lighting. I bought some more lights. So now I have three lights. Bang. I look good. Okay. So I got this this uh, high, high-end camera that I was going to do for live um, shows, but then it's like everyone started. We bring- got three lights out of. We got a hair light now. That's great. I got everything, dude. I got so many lights. But there's a, so to because my camera's it's so good that it's it would. <laughs> Sam doesn't have the technical lane. To yeah, describe I don't. what he's trying. To- <laughs> my camera's so you know it's good. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but like, it's like it's it, just got a lot of lens to it, you know. <laughs> well, it's like the files are too big that come off oh, the camera, yeah, so, so you, you need a you, high you, bit rate cable. I yeah, guess. you yeah. have to have a high bit rate cable. Yeah, that's what so, you're gonna say, I'm sure. <laughs> no, but I don't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you're totally right. I have to go to a Best Buy, find some fucking nerd, and show him a picture of it. Be like, me need I got this. a really good camera. I need a cable. <laughs> I need one of these. I need one of those strings that goes into the really good cameras. Yeah, yeah. So I end up, I end up, uh, so I, I go to bed. I, I, so my friend Brian comes over to try to help me with my, 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 my studio. Uh-huh. He goes, get this. So I ordered it. It showed up. I put it together. And then one day, I, I, one weekend I go out of town and I'm going to get my dates of this. I go out of town. Okay. I come back. Because I brought the camera with me, I set the 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 cable right there on the table. Gone. I'm like, okay, it's probably somewhere in all this clusterfuck of 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 all these like uh, of this uh, high end good camera. Okay, <laughs> that's really good. You're not an organized person. We okay. should just say that, dude. I've cleaned it out. I've I've rearranged it. I've gotten rid of all the unnecessary cables. It's not there. You got like a tweaker. A tweaker goes hawking your shit yeah, at like a, spiritual like, pawn shop. Yeah, one hundred percent gone, dude. Hidden. What were we talking about? Like, I imagine on cash days that like there's just uh, some other part of town. There's a pawn shop where shit just keeps appearing in yeah, a corner. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just like where cables and stuff just keep showing up. I don't even up. know. It cracks me up. There's bro. a giant roll of toilet paper over here. Just missing shit. Gone. That is weird. Have yeah. you had any spookiness like other than that, or is it just missing stuff? Dana, Dana, when she talks about the ghosts, like I said, she spells. So it won't, I'm sorry, she spells out words, so what? the g- ghosts won't know what she, she's talking about. What the ghost can't spell? That's Dana thinks the ghost can't spell. 
And the funniest thing is sometimes what are you talking sometimes about? Sometimes she spells and I have to spell it out so I know what she's spelling. I'm like, what did you just say? I don't even think the ghost. Yeah, <laughs> you're more likely to misunderstand yeah. her than the ghost. Oh, yeah. Why? I, what if she starts talking to? What if she starts talking to joke the ghost and then starts spelling for me so I didn't know she was. Anyways, he's H E R E. You're the only parent who H E R E whose girlfriend talks to their children spelling words. Out so you don't understand it's it. So be hilarious, bro. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack.